Hey everyone, today is Wednesday, May 20th, 2020. Uh, today we are going to be starting a three-part series on our closest neighbor in outer space, the moon. So let's take a look at uh, what you're going to be working on today. Um, don't forget to answer the attendance question um, today related to the moon. And uh, of course, you're already watching the video. Um, you kind of have two activities to work on today. Um, I'm going to kind of quickly go through the slides in the PowerPoint today um, with you in this video clip. But um, <clears throat> make sure that you look at them a little more closely. Um, and then you guys are going to be completing a, an activity. It's a Google Doc um, called Looking Around the Lunar Surface to uh, see a little bit more of what the um, Apollo astronauts saw when they landed on the moon and what you can see from Earth uh, in the nighttime sky when the moon is out and uh, nice and full. You'll be able to see some of the features from the ground that you can see in these pictures if you eat without a telescope or binoculars or anything like that. Um, and then your homework, actually, you can either do it today or tomorrow since um, our discussion on the moon lasts a few days. Um, you're going to read a part of the rare earth hypothesis um, about the requirements that the moon provides for life um, and why we believe it's important to have a large moon to help support life. Um, at this point we know the planet has to be in a habitable zone around a main sequence star that came from a supernova. Um, we know all those details so now we're going to be looking at um, what else in the neighborhood needs to be right. Um, we know that there are a certain arrangement of planets that help like having a big Jupiter um, protects us from asteroids. Um, but having a large moon is also very beneficial for life on Earth. So you guys are going to read a little bit about those benefits. Um, again, either today or tomorrow, or you can split it up between the two days, whatever. It's a quick one. It's not too long, but it gives you some background information on why the moon is important for life on Earth. Hey, um, so just in a nutshell, um, the moon... Um, Earth's moon is actually rather large for our planet size. Usually planets our size don't have a moon quite as big, which we think is definitely beneficial. Um, the moon helps to stabilize our tilt, otherwise we would be wobbling all over and our seasons would be very erratic um, and the temperature would be very erratic as well. Um, it provides tidal environments, which um, we one of the leading theories on where life began on Earth was in tide pools. Um, so no tide pools, no tides, possibly no life. Um, and then again, just like with Jupiter, it does protect us from asteroids. Um, we think theoretically that it's not 100% necessary to have a large moon, but we know that it does make life more successful, especially when we're talking about um, the evolution of intelligent life. Okay, um, so what you guys are going to be looking at today um, in the activity is some of the features that you can see. Um, there's kind of two distinct um, colors on the moon when you look at it really closely. We have these lighter areas and then we have these darker patches. Um, the lighter areas are called the lunar highlands. Um, and these are the parts of the moon that are covered with craters. Um, there are lots of change in elevation, lots of mountains, um, and then the darker regions like from Earth, I would say they kind of look dark gray. Um, these are kind of flat areas. Um, there's very few craters that's actually um, made of basalt. Now you might remember that from geology. Um, so those are the two kind of features. And you're going to explore a little bit more about them in the uh, activity today. And you can see them here. These kind of darker regions are the maria. And then the highlands are the lighter areas. Um, some other things that you can see pretty clearly from the moon, this is the side that faces us. Um, only one side faces the Earth. Um, you can clearly see some very large impact crater. And then you can see these like, they look almost like little jets or little spokes that are coming out from the crater. If you kind of look where my mouse is, um, those are called rays. And those are just kind of debris that gets ejected when that meteor, asteroid, what have you, um, smashes into the lunar surface. I, um, and then you guys are going to take a little look a little bit more on the leading theory about how our moon formed, which also happened to be our um, attendance question for today. Um, and so, yes, we did get hit by a large 
object we think it was about the size of Mars. Uh, they call it Thea. Um, and we believe what happened is when this guy smashed into us, um, all the debris kind of surrounded the planet and sort of collected over thousands of years and eventually formed the moon. So the moon is made of pieces of Thea and pieces of the Earth that have collected together um, around our planet. Okay, and this is just kind of a nice little step-by-step um, -step animation to show almost like a time lapse of what we think um, happened during that impact. Okay, so you guys are going to explore um, this a little bit more along with the Apollo landing, all that kind of good stuff. But um, just like usual, if you have any questions, send me an email, um, send me a message in Google Classroom. My office hours today are from 10 to 11, so um, you can also find me there to ask questions. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this look uh, at the moon, and I will see you all in class tomorrow.